DNS, which is short for the Domain Name System, is a service that runs on all of our computers, phones, servers, basically any type of computer that connects to the internet. Practically everyone is using it, but only a few people actually understand how it works, and you're about to become part of that club. The main purpose of DNS is to resolve domain names to IP addresses. And this works kind of like how your contacts in your phone work. Most people can't remember the phone numbers of people that they would like to contact, especially millennials who were born in an age where they likely never even had to try and remember a phone number or punch it in from a pay phone or some other type of phone where a contact is not just a button press away because we were around during the invention of cell phones and smartphones that can easily store contacts. All you have to do is recognize the name or even the picture of the person who you want to contact, which is connected to the actual phone number of the person that you want to call or text. These names and faces are much easier for us humans to remember than a 10 digit phone number. And likewise, it's probably a lot easier for you to remember a website URL than the IP address that actually corresponds to that website URL. And this is where DNS comes in. When you go to your browser and you type in a domain like templeos.org, you technically aren't connecting to templeos.org you're really connecting to 185.10.68.133 over port 443 since this site supports HTTPS. This is why if you do an NS lookup of whatever domain you're trying to connect to and you put it into your browser prepended with HTTPS, then it's going to take you to the same place. Or of course you would prepend it with HTTP if the website doesn't support HTTPS for whatever reason. But remembering that IP address as well as all the other IPs that you might be using, some of the more enlightened kids watching this video might be using 89.16.167.134, but remembering all of those numbers, it's just unsustainable. So when we type a URL into our browser, like templeos.org, we have to go to an authoritative name server to resolve that URL to an IP address. The problem is we don't know where these authoritative name servers are. In fact, we don't know, we don't actually know where most of the servers that are involved in the domain name resolution process are. Our computers just don't interface with them directly. But we do know where the recursive resolver, aka the DNS recursor, is. This is the DNS server configured by your organization or your ISP or yourself if you've decided to fiddle around with your DNS settings and use something like OpenDNS, for example. And this is the first step in the DNS process. The DNS recursor is a lot like Saul Goodman. It knows a server who knows a server who knows another server that knows what site you're looking for. Now, thankfully, this DNS recursor is using caching for the sites that it has most recently had to go through the full DNS process to track down. And it's going to be doing this for the most popular sites out there that you would go to all the time. So you don't actually end up going through the whole DNS resolution process because somebody probably already did this or you've gone through this process yourself if you're just using the computer by yourself at home, and thus the result has been cached for the past couple of hours, or maybe a whole day, depending on how things are configured. But if you're the first person to try and visit, say, gentoo.org for the day, then the DNS process would be as follows. You type in gentoo.org to your web browser, 
and the browser sends a DNS query to the DNS recursor asking, where is gentoo.org? And the recursor is going to give us the Saul Goodman response, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows another guy. So the recursor goes to that guy, who is the root name server. And this root server isn't just one guy. It could be one of 20 or so who are supposed to be run by highly trusted individuals. Usually this root name server would know the answer of who gentoo.org is, but if the website is obscure enough for it to not be in the root name server's cache either, meaning nobody in the world has asked this particular name server who gentoo.org is recently, or perhaps the server has been rebooted or had its cache cleared recently, so then it has to go to the next guy in the DNS process which is the global top-level domain name server. And there's also a few of these as well for each type of top-level domain, which could be .com, .org, .gov, and so on and so forth, depending on what type of website you're trying to visit. Now again, usually these top-level domain servers can resolve most of the .coms, .orgs, or .govs that people are going to. But there's so many out there, especially in the .com TLD, that it's impossible for these name servers to know exactly where every single site is. So in our example, the .org TLD that was queried doesn't know exactly where gentoo.org is, but it knows who you can ask that does know for sure which is the authoritative name server of that website, which might be something like ns1.gentoo.org or ns2.gentoo.org, since any decent high traffic website is going to have multiple redundant name servers. And generally, this name server is going to be run by the same organization that owns whichever website you're trying to visit. So. Obviously, if they're run by the same people, they're going to know the IPs of that company's services. Otherwise, nobody's gonna be able to access them, at least nobody externally. And when we finally query that Gentoo name server, we're going to, it's going to respond with 89.16.167.134. As well as an HTTP GET request or a ping response, depending on what it is that we're actually trying to do with this domain. And once that is done, the caching process is going to begin. Because as you can imagine, going through the whole Saul Goodman route every single time we want to access a site or ping it is going to be a huge waste of time and bandwidth. So you're going to have the result of what is gentoo.org, that DNS resolution, cached on your local computer, and it will likely also get cached on the top-level domain DNS and the DNS of your ISP or your organization so that the next visitor of gentoo.org doesn't have to go through all of these jumps to get there. And this is also the reason why generally websites are going to use static IPs or at least not change their IPs very often. Because just like when your friend gets a new phone number and you have to update the contact information in your phone for them, your computers, DNS cache, the ISPs, DNS, and the top level domain DNS will all have to update this information and go through all the steps that I outlined earlier to resolve that new IP address to gentoo.org. And this isn't great if you're the one running a website because for most people, if it takes more than 0.2 seconds longer than normal to access a website, that they want, then they're going to assume that it's broken or down, or they might go bother the poor IT guy again with a non-issue, and none of us want that. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to share it with the DNS pros, the DNS noobs, 
and especially those who have no clue what DNS is. Leave a like, subscribe, and tick the notification bell so you know when new videos are being released.